Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at using SAMs in surface to surface mode. Now one of the things I really wish here that would be kind of nice is if I had this little thing I could make up here in the bottom of the screen that says the Mediterranean 1986 or like something like that, but uh, someday we'll get to that. So anyway, we have ourselves a Spirance, which is a pretty solid ship here. We have the vertical launch version, which of course is a bunch of missiles uh, ready to come on uh, distributing out the top. And uh, we've detected some hostile targets over here on the other side of the horizon. It looks like, uh, let's see, what do we have for contact report here? Let's see, we're looking at either a drum tilt radar and a square tie radar, and there's a huge list of them. If I had to guess, however, it'd be pretty obvious that it's one of the versions of the OSA there. And the OSA is a pretty neat little system. It has a pretty nasty little system on it that shoots anti-ship missiles. And it looks like there's a lot of them going at once. So um, that's definitely something I need to be worried about. Now, unfortunately, uh, coming over to my handy dandy sprints here, I'm looking at it. Let's see what we got. Uh, we have harpoons. Harpoons are cool. Let's see what we got for harpoons here. Uh, harpoons. Let's see here. We have a range of 75, which is eh, not terrible. Let's go ahead and take a look at our potential adversaries here. Let's say OSA. Yeah, we'll do the OSA too. That's fine. And let's see. It takes approximately two harpoons. Uh-oh. That would mean that we're going to run out of harpoons before we're going to run out of targets. And the other problem with an OSA too, for those of you who are familiar with it, is if we bring up that database entry one more time, you'll probably observe how many missiles they have on board, which is going to make it a little bit dangerous for us. Obviously, we are a destroyer. We could probably shoot down a few of the incoming missiles. But if they timed it right, we could be in line with a shouting telephone. Let's see here. What do these guys carry? Uh, bell tap is the radar type DL data link grails. Aha! Stick single. <gasps> Four! Ooh, so if they fired simultaneously, uh, let's see, that would be 20 missiles coming our way. That's a, that's a lot. Uh, we could probably shoot half of them, eh, maybe two-thirds of them down without having too much issue here, at least with this piece of technology. So uh, we're busted. Um, we'll never be able to hit them all, and we're doomed. It's a game over. The scenario is a failure, and I've got my health self a little SH-60B here, which is sort of chilling. Problem with this guy, of course, is what is he carrying? Nothing. So uh, we can't even use him, and I have no submarines. Uh, I guess that's it. That's game over. Not exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order him to uh, flip on his uh, radars here. And now we have a very, very confident track on this uh, group of uh, aircraft, or aircraft, that too. A bunch of these uh, little ships here. Uh, there's only four of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control shift f 9 And you probably noticed this many, many times over. But there's this little thing here. This is anti-surface warfare. And it says, use SAMs in ASUW mode. Now, believe it or not, most SAMs, and I'm not saying, I should never say the word most, many SAMs actually have the capability of engaging ground targets, including the SA-2. Yeah, the SA-2 can be used to engage ground targets, assuming you can lock onto it through the clutter. So now if I come in here and I hit this little button here, I'm actually authorizing my ship to go ahead and pop those things off as if it was uh, using, um, using its SAMs. Now, what SAM do we have on here? Well, if you scroll down here, you'll notice I have SM-6s. Now, some of you will go, whoa, 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 man, come on. 1986 with an SA-6, I don't think, SM-6, yeah, it, it, sorry, it's the best I could do here, but you'll notice it has a range of 130 miles, and that's an anti-surface range of 130 miles. Now, some of you who have played Dangerous Waters probably know this thing really, really, really well, because you did the exact same thing with that thing, and you actually never carried a single harpoon in your life, because it was just easier to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order all these guys to be hostile. Of course, I should probably get a visual ID. And what's going to happen is my handy-dandy little destroyer here is going to be like, Okay, no problem. So we're going to fast forward time here, and you notice he is not launching his missiles. And you're sitting there going, uh-oh, that's a problem. Well, the problem we have here is not that we're out of range, which amazing amount, ta-da, we are actually in range the entire time. The bigger problem here is if I press Shift F1 and actually click on him, you'll notice that uh, this one is set as so far at this maximum range. It has a pretty good target, but you're not supposed to be attacking targets that are this small. <sighs> No, man, no. Shift F1, Control F1. Try again, manual gauge target. Ah, helps if you actually click the thing you're shooting with. Let's go ahead and um, select all these at once. We're going to come down here to this one. We're going to allocate one each. Boop. And now we're going to watch the fireworks. Now, the important thing that you just saw there was the fact that because I always had little teeny targets here, he did not want to engage them all at the same time. So we're going to pop that one over there. I'm pretty confident I, I gave one to each one of the rest of you here. There's always a chance that it did it incorrectly, though. Oh, let's see, three allocated. Uh, oh, that's why, because we need to wait until the data link channel becomes available here. So this missile right now is actually being data link controlled. It's not actually being controlled by our ship. The reason it's not being controlled by a ship, of course, is what you'd expect. There's no actual, we have a horizon issue here. If I actually zoom out, we are on this side and they're on this side. We can't actually see each other. It's kind of one of those interesting little problems. So our helicopter here is actually uh, doing us a favor. Now notice, uh, whoop, bam, oh, no joy. 
<laughs> comes the next one. Notice as soon as it gets into range to engage itself, it automatically starts up popping itself off here. Now, if I just do, whoops, I'm having a fun time with that today. I don't know why. It's still doing that to me. Is this something they changed? Don't tell me I just discovered a bug. Yeah, that is definitely a bug. Nice. I always find the fun ones. It's, it's always me who finds these things, I swear. That's okay, though. So what you're observing here is that our weapons are arriving and they're not really doing any damage. Now, the reason they're not doing any damage is on account of the fact that because of the way our situation is arranged here is that we can't actually see the thing we're shooting at. We're basically trying to get it close enough, and then it takes over at the end. If we actually were to go over the weapon itself, and I'll bring up the screen. I don't know why these keep coming up all maximized, but that's all right for us. But if you actually scroll down here, you'll notice it's got an active radar seeker with a 15 nautical mile range. Now, if you open up that active radar seeker here, you'll notice that it's late 2010s, shipping information, anti-service, all those different components. It actually has to detect that target in order to reliably hit it. So if I press Shift F1 again, and I drag that box over here, let's go ahead now. Now we are in range of our handy dandy harpoons. Now watch what happens when we do this. So I'm gonna come down here from SM6s. So I'm gonna give two each. This is the biggest waste of SM6s in the histories of the weapon here. And he's just gonna start popping these things off, basically um, wasting an awful lot of ammunition. Now, one of the interesting things here is if you actually open up this and I switch to weapon endgame, what you're gonna observe here is that the weapon just missed. It missed by about seven feet. Well, you can see it was about 10 meters away from the target point. You can see that it ripped by here, it ripped by here, and again, it's exploding. And it's having one heck of a time actually hitting any targets. This is actually very, very common for this particular type of weapon against this type of target. It just was not the intended purpose of it. I feel like I would have um, seven foot close enough should be enough damage. Now, if I actually grab here and I press uh, Shift F1 again, drag a box, let's say we want to use the harpoons instead. Now, watch what happens here. I'll use one each. That looks good. This should get me four on the way. Now, the cool thing with harpoons is they're in these little box launchers, and when they fire, they actually come off a rail and they just go, you know, go flying. These are not VLS weapons. Now, these are purpose built anti ship weapons. And now they're going to be sneaking up here or getting a little bit closer. <laughs> it's just popping off these SM6s like they're free. So it's going to come rolling in here very, very quickly. Oh, that looks pretty good. It's a pretty clean hit. And here goes my boom. Oh, bam. Look at that. Coming in on this one, we got a direct lock. And oh my gosh, look out. Bam. Caught him too. And this guy, of course, look at this panic turning. <gasps> and now he is out of the fight just like that. Now, what you're probably saying is, well, if this guy were in range of his actual radar, would it make a difference as far as the effectiveness of that weapon? Well, let's go ahead and do that real fast. Grab myself a red team here. Control V. Now we'll get somebody who's well within range here. We'll go ahead and I'll pop in a surface vessel. We'll make it something big and squishy that's easy to kill here. Uh, let's see here. Container. I feel so bad blowing these things up. Let's see here. Um, not really a container ship. That way, you know, it, if I say it's not a container ship, it's not actually a container ship. So now let's go ahead and give our systems a half a moment to go ahead and acquire. There he is. Shift F1. Go ahead and click on him. We'll go ahead and pop off a couple of these. 52 seconds. Oof. That's not bad, though. Now I'm actually improve the crew quality here real fast. I'm improving the crew quality. The advantage here is that once you've done that, it will uh, decrease the amount of time it takes them to target that other ship. There it goes. I think it was a little too fast, though. Let me go ahead and slow down time a little more carefully here. All right, fire. Shunk. That is uh, not the sound that weapons make these days, but you can see now we're actually in range. And what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more reliable is under sensors, I'm actually going to flip on our radar. So we have very good quality track here. Yes, so we're both within the horizon and we're well within that weapons range. And you can see it cleanly, cleanly smacked into that thing. So now if I wanted to, I could just press, why did it work that time? Whatever, F1 works now. Now, if I just order him to do a conventional attack, he's probably going to fire off the last couple harpoons. Yeah, because the harpoon is a much, much better weapon for this. There's the active radar, ba-boom. <laughs> I did mention this is a container. Well, it's not really a container ship, though. Let's be honest, folks. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Oh, man, how many of these is going to take? Here comes the SM6s. Maybe you should use the 76 millimeter cannon, and it would have been a little cheaper. <laughs> this is the biggest waste of SM6s. I think I don't even want to know how much one, each one of these missiles cost. <laughs> but um, maybe we need to go with a gunnery. Oh, that did it. That did it. Cool. So what are the takeaways here? Uh, the important takeaway here is if you're not using, if you, first of all, you can use SAMs in surface-to-surface -surface mode. That's one point. 
The second point, which is very important, is if you're doing a data link shot like we did with our helicopter buddy over here, remember that the shot is going to have massively degraded accuracy. There's not much you can do about that unless you're trying to like shoot the Kuznets off or something like that. And the final thing is if you are within range to go ahead and use your weapon and you can see it and target it yourself, you're going to have a much, much easier time of employing the weapon. Enjoy.